Hi, I'm Dave Young, and this is a continuation in the series looking at an MDO 3104 as compared to its predecessor, at least the predecessor in my lab, the TDS 2024B. I'm really excited to look today at the analysis of digital signals like I squared C or a UART line, not only in the digital domain but also in the analog domain. This should be one place that this MDO scope really excels, being that you can see both on one screen, but I'm not so sure yet. We'll take a look at not only the circuit I've got going, but the scope performance. Here is my circuit setup. I wanted to test an I squared C line at the same time as I would test a UART line. So what I've got is an Arduino and a demo board for a pressure and temperature sensor, two very stock parts, there's nothing special there. On the pressure sensor and temperature sensor board, there is I squared C running from here to the Arduino, and we've got channel one of both of my scopes plugged in here, and then channel two, channel one is data, channel two is clock, and then that pipes right into this Arduino, and then the Arduino, I've got the TX and RX lines wired up with the digital, two digital bits of my MDO scope because it has a logic analyzer with this nice uh, pigtail setup and then channel 3 and 4 on my TDS 2024. Again a simple circuit it will every two seconds ask for the data from this sensor and then after it's got the data it'll send it over the serial bus to my computer and tell me the temperature and pressure. First, let's take a look at how the 2024 sees these signals. I've got the system set up with channel 1 and channel 2 for I squared C data and clock, and then channel 3 is TX and channel 4, no, I'm sorry, channel 3 is TX and channel 4 is RX. Okay, everything looks good. So I've got the I squared C lines communicating appropriately and uh, it's sending data to my serial port on my computer. No problem. Let's take a look at either of the signals. I can change my trigger to channel 1 and then look at where the trigger... Let's take a look at this section. So I'm going to zoom in where it's being triggered. Awesome. Great. So I can see the rise time, the fall time, I can see both the clock and the data. Everything looks good on my I squared C. As far as signal integrity goes, I'd be satisfied with that. Now let's take a look at the TX line. So we're going to have to change the source to channel 4. And there it is. It's running at a much slower frequency, but that's okay. Okay. Again, these these traces look great, nice clean edges, no problems, fast rise times, fast fall times, good. So as far as analog goes, the 2024 is able to tell me that these signals look reasonable. So my pull-ups are probably set appropriately, and uh, I should be able to communicate properly over this, and that is confirmed by the fact that I can get accurate data all the way from the sensor to the Arduino and then up to my computer over the serial line. All right, good. Unfortunately, that's kind of where the 2024 ends with its capabilities. So it doesn't have any ability to shake out any sort of digital analysis. I think this is going to be where the MDO excels because it can look at both the digital domain and the analog domain at the same time. So let's move on to that. The 3104 is set up the exact same way as the 2024 was, where we have 1 and 2 as the I squared C data and clock lines and then TX and RX with no data on RX. No problem. So we can do the exact same thing we did with the previous unit where I get to zoom in, let's change the trigger, trigger menu, edge on channel 1, DC coupling, no problem. So we're going to zoom in, oops, we're going to zoom it in. There's so many knobs it's really easy to knock one, which I guess isn't an awful thing. Okay. Awesome. Wait for it to trigger. I see the same rise times, fall times, everything looks good. Um, looking at it from an analog perspective, we are in good shape. 
let's take a look at the TX line. So I go back to trigger menu, I'm going to change the source down here to TX, and turn that guy off, and doop. Let's see if I can center it on the trigger, there it is, and Let's see, oh, you know what? I'm getting some noise here on this RX line that's not supposed to be there. So I'm gonna have to edit that so I go thresholds. Yeah, and look at that, the, uh, let's see, we've got the threshold set at four volts. Let's change that to like two. That's much more reasonable. Okay, no more noise, good. And I get to see that my TX line is doing well. I can zoom all the way in on that. Uh, I can see rise times, fall times. I can do everything I want. It's kind of neat that they color it blue for low and green for high uh, and gray for unknown. But again, as far as analog goes, this is wonderful. I can quickly ascertain that my data lines should be working well and communicating without any analog problems. Sweet. As I mentioned, the MDO is basically designed to do this exact function, look at analog and digital at the same time. So we're going to see a bunch of functionality here that will really show how it differentiates itself from an analog-only scope. For instance, right now we've got the digital lines. We're only using two out of 16. So if we wanted to add a spy bus or if we wanted to add extra digital lines to record, we have a whole lot of extra inputs that we can use versus the TDS 2024, it's totally maxed out, the two I squared C lines and the two TX and RX lines. Now let's take a look at this bus functionality. So we can program this bus as an I squared C bus and I can tell it which ones clock and data, good. I can set my thresholds and those are good and I can label it I squared C, awesome. Let's take a look at what that means. And we'll zoom back in here. It's telling me, this bus line is telling me that it's sending an address and data. You can see plenty of data all being decoded for you. So if you were missing a bit, or if you were not sure what something was doing, you could look here and say, okay, it sends to address 76, it'll send Mm, let's see. There it is. 76, it'll send 58. Or whatever the data is being sent. It'll decode it for you right live. And I can do the same thing. I've already got this set up. I can do the same thing for RS-232 on channel 1. So if I change it to the digital channels, I can go on the TX line. And it's telling me in hex what all of those highs and lows are. And I'm telling you as an analog guy who sits there and counts bits, one zero, one zero, one zero, that is an amazing feature. Uh, anytime I do any digital work, I would always want to have that. Now, of course, doing simple stuff like this with the digital lines is pretty easy. You can buy $100 or $150 logic analyzer plugs right into your USB scope and it'll do all this decoding for you, but it won't do the analog stuff at the same time. I mentioned in my previous video about how there's this wave inspector, this zoom works. So I can hit zoom here and I can pan and zoom. You see this is the waveform that it caught and I can zoom back and forth and I can see what each of the highs and lows are. So I'm going to try and zoom in right here on this trigger event and take a look at the data. And on the last video I mentioned that this isn't very good. Like what am I going to do with this? You can't even tell what's going on here. And the reason is that the acquisition length is set very low. So what I didn't do is I didn't set this acquire. Right now it's only recording 10,000 samples, I can change that all the way up to 10 mega samples. We'll just do one mega sample. There we go. Now we've got much better resolution. Look at how much closer I can zoom in. 
I can see the data, I can see the bus decoder can do its job, and I can zoom right in here, and I can look once again at the rise times and fall times. This is all over, this amount of time is 10 milliseconds, and I'm sitting here on a 4 microsecond scale. This is a great feature where you can look at data, and if you, for instance, had one piece of data that was getting sent incorrectly, you can look at the actual analog traces to see how they got caught. I could easily take this kind of data from a logic analyzer and uh, analog scope like my 2024, but I'd have to set up not only the two instruments, I'd also have to set up the external trigger. So exactly at this moment when a logic analyzer saw this data, it would cause my O-scope to trigger. I can do that all integrated into this one unit. For instance, if I decide that I'm going to trigger on, I can go trigger menu, source, edge, I want it to be on a bus. So I can source my trigger on a bus, and it doesn't have to be that, it can be the I squared C bus, and I can trigger it on, let's say I want to trigger it on an address of, I know the address of my unit here is 76, so I can go to 76, good, and then it's going to trigger right on 76, awesome, and then I can set the position right to here, and then anytime it's going to see 76, let's zoom out, anytime it sees 76 it's going to trigger, it's going to catch this first one for me, and I can zoom in, it caught a 76 here, so it triggered, which is pretty great. On top of triggering, there is a function called the search function, and we can, instead of just triggering on the first time it hits 76, or any time it sees an address of 76, we can go search, search, on, good, and we can say, we can go search on the bus on I squared C on the address of 76, awesome. And then all these marks up here, all these little white dots up here, those represent different instances where the search came up positive. So if I zoom in here, we can see every time that our pressure sensor gets addressed at 76, something's going on. So if I wanted, if I had like three or four I squared C devices all on one bus, I'd be looking at zeroing in on each of these manually, but here I can search for them. And what's really cool is if I go and I use a zoom tool again, I can zoom in and I can say I want to find every time there's a 76 and I want to look at the analog signal. Here's a little one of the little white markers and I can switch, tick, using this back and forth on the marks. I can go to the left, this is the first time that it addresses 76 and I look and that looks okay, good data, good data, 58. I can hit next mark and it advances me to my next one so there's data 0 next one data 76 48 and I can cycle through these very quickly again this is something that you can do with a logic analyzer but what you can't do is zoom in all the way on these analog signals and see not only that the logic analyzer perceived as a high or low but the oscilloscope is verifying that yes it is a good edge and yes it is a good high so this should be a valid signal which any chip should be able to pick up. Inevitably, anytime somebody takes two instruments like a logic analyzer and an oscilloscope and joins them into one box, people are going to wonder, you know, are they doing a good job of both of them or are they going to ruin both projects and make one mediocre instrument? Uh, and I, that's the first question I had looking at the scope. Right now I want to show what the capabilities are in terms of let's try and use it as a logic analyzer at the same time as using it as an oscilloscope. So what I've done is I've set the acquisition to be 10 mega samples uh, and then looked at an entire time frame of one cycle of my data. Now obviously I can zoom in and out and in and out. I've also set up as I did previously the search term so I can find the first instance of when we address the uh, when we address the I squared C. So let's find that first term. Okay great. Now I've got a logic analyzer with the depth of about what is this like 100 milliseconds or 200 milliseconds uh, and then 
I can zoom in here and see each individual one. If I want to look at that one or move right or left, I can do that on these different markers. So as far as a logic analyzer goes, that's great. It does what I need it to do. And then I can look and how well does it do with the with the analog scope. So let's see how close we can get. So we have this address 76. So let's get really close in on that trace. Let's say you wanted to get an exact measurement of the rise and fall time. So we can go all the way in. Wow, that's pretty good. Here I am at uh, one microsecond per division. And I could still go in further. Let's take a close look at this fall time. There we go. So I want to see that fall time. Okay, so I've zoomed in to the maximum level, which is at 100 nanoseconds per division, as listed here. On one scope trace, I just did a single sweep because it takes about a minute for it to acquire all this stuff. But I can take a look at this falling edge here after looking at the logic analyzer output. Here I'd say they did a pretty great job. Uh, the only noticeable thing is this pan and zoom function has significant delays on when you move things around, but to be honest, there's a lot of data being shoved around right now to display, so uh, I guess I could, I could certainly deal with that given the fact that I have so much data both zoomed in and zoomed out on the logic macro level. Well done. I, I dig it. The MDO did great overall, I thought. It was able to analyze all the digital and analog signals at the same time, which was pretty impressive and handy. I would definitely see myself using this feature as I'm developing different stuff for my clients. Uh, I will note that this big screen is a must. I think anything smaller would be absolutely awful, and uh, I'd, I'd even be willing to sacrifice bench space to have another few inches in front of me. That being said, you know, I'm a guy who thinks that if you don't have enough space on your bench, uh, you need a bigger bench. So I didn't think that I would appreciate having one instrument for the logic analyzer and the analog scope. But having both of them, being both time-based instruments, having both of them on my bench and on one screen, not having to deal with external triggers and not sure if I'm getting the right signal at the right time on both instruments, uh, that was awesome. Another thing that I learned today, which I'm really glad I did, is being able to change how many acquisition points it gets, I think is a feature that's going to come in more and more often in scopes. Uh, I've never used one before, to be honest, but things with this deep of a memory, I'm sure it'll be a standard feature, so you can trade off how deep of a memory you want to use and how quickly you want things to react. So there you have it, the MDO did awesome, the TDS, still a great analog scope, but after getting a taste of this, uh, I don't think I can go back to not having digital and analog in the same place. Please stay tuned, thanks for watching, and uh, on my next one I'm sure I'll dive more into some of the MDO's capabilities.